Hello and welcome to Old Ways Gardening and Prepping. My name is Teresa. I'd like to welcome you out to my backyard up underneath the canopy where the sun is going down. And I'm playing, trying to stay out of the shadows. It's been a hot one today. We were between 105 and 106, one of those. But it's late afternoon. It's cooling down, and it's time to strain my uh, first batch of wild lettuce tincture. Now, if you notice, it's nice, dark, and rich. There's a trick to it. Right when it's almost ready to strain, about five days before, I will pour half the alcohol out into a container to save it and I'll use a submergible blender and blend up all the leaves and the stems and let that marinate for the last five days or a little more but you want to make sure you agitate it every day after that so it's time to start straining some wild lettuce tincture wonderful medicine for pain and for those who are always wanting to know the dosage it's always in the description box below as well as i always tell you now wild lettuce is an interesting medicine you start off with a half of a dropper full if it's not strong enough, you go up. If it's too strong, which usually a half a dose, half a doctor fill, is fine. Uh, now, if it is too strong for you, you will uh, work it down until you find what your exact dosage is. And then you know that you'll be out of pain and fully functional. Because until you figure out what your dosage amount is, there's a good chance you might as well get ready to take a nap. Now, this is not a narcotic. A lot of people spread a lot of misinformation. Wild lettuce is not a drug. It is not addicting. It is not a narcotic. What it does do Yes, it works on your opiate reactors in your brain. It makes them think that you have had a very, very strong big pharma pain pill. That's why a lot of people think it's narcotic. It's not. Not whatsoever. And it's not addicting. But it does work, and it works wonders. Now what we're going to do is agitate it a little bit before I go to strain it. Make sure that it's mixed all up, all beautiful and dark. And I'm going to get my first half gallon. Make sure that your jars are clean and sanitized and dry on the inside make sure they are definitely dry you will want to use i always use a canning funnel and i finally found one of my uh filterless coffee filters the ones that have the open bottoms and see that just fits perfectly down into the funnel there we go I'm going to want to clean up any spill. Ooh. You can tell it's alcohol. And it's only 100 proof, y'all. I do not use anything stronger nor weaker. With this, because it's fresh plant material, I use 100 proof vodka. Now this could be interesting. The first pour is always the worst. And I hate wasting medicine. I really do. 
I'm going to have to wash my hands before long because I'm going to smell like a brewery or a distillery. Let me get that right. But you can see how nice and dark that medicine is. Hold on a second. Now you can see a little bit better. Look how beautiful and dark that is. And like I said, these filters work wonderful. They catch all the small fragments. That should be a little bit less messy. But this is wonderful, wonderful pain medicine. All natural. <coughs> This is why I like to use the half gallon jars because it's cleaner. You don't make such a mess, but with the wild lettuce, I make bigger batches. But you can see how it's catching all the fine particles. Sometimes you have to it around inside to encourage it to move out of the way and let the medicine strain. All natural pain medication that, you know, Big Pharma don't have a hand in and it won't, you won't get addicted to it. Now you don't want to stir too hard because you don't want to break your filter and believe me that could be a hot mess right there and of course the ultra fine particles will make its way through that's perfectly fine nothing wrong with that now I'm all I like to mix it up because I want to make sure both jars get tincture from the bottom, especially after I blended it to make sure that the medicine is of equal pouring or because as it settles, sometimes some of the bigger particles will be in the bottom. I want to make sure both jars get it. But look how beautiful, dark, and rich that is. Now, do not try to run the bottom particles back through another uh, tincturing because, yeah, there's not much medicine left in those leaves at all. And it's just not worth the time. Now, what I do is I'll be, once I start getting to the bigger particles, I will be uh, 
putting those on a paper towel and I put them in my compost pile y'all because they are spent And also, once you get them all, all of it strained out, it will separate in the jar. Nothing's wrong with it. There will be very small, fine particles in there. You just shake it up. Always shake it up. Draining tinctures are easy. Too many people want to complicate it. Making tinctures are as simple and easy as well. There's no, no reason to complicate it. As long as you follow the directions, you'll be fine. Just be gentle with the filter. Now, also, another thing about the filterless coffee filter. All you do is wash it in good soapy hot bleach water once you're done. And you just continue to keep using it. And you want to make sure that you press it and get all of that out of there. You want to leave nothing behind, if possible. And then you just knock it out, put it back in, and strain some more. Now, since we're getting down to what I call the sludge that I have uh, pureed, it was leaf stem. It didn't look like this. You have to be careful if you do this too early because your tincture can go bad. Because it doesn't move around unless you move it. But you want to press all of that and make sure it all comes, all the alcohol comes out. You don't want to leave nothing behind. And as you notice, it will slowly drip, but when you press, it drips a whole lot better. Oh, I want my beetle. Alright, I'm going to finish the rest of this and I will bring you back as soon as I'm done with it. Okay, I have got it all strained and out of a gallon jar, I got a half a gallon and almost three quarters. Now, of course, the plant material that was in took a lot of room, but, and as you can see, there is no moisture in that because I squeezed it all out. And like I said, 
it looks like alfalfa but I will put that in my compost pile now this jar is filled almost up to the rim and I got the lid on it this one is lower because after this video is over I'm fixing to fill up a bunch of two ounce bottles so I can take them to the festival to hopefully sell this weekend and if not I'll be filling up more jars later on but I'm leaving it in this jar for now because like I said I'm gonna be filling up two ounce bottles and as it gets lower I will probably end up either putting it in might be a jelly jar by the time I get to filling bottles but you don't want to leave all this space you don't want to store it with all this space you want to break it down into smaller bottles into pints or quart jars but this air you don't want all this air it's fine for now but you don't want to store it like this because it will the air will um, react with the alcohol oxidation all right now let's label these of course i know what they are because they're i'm sorry wild lettuce tincture is ugly but it's wonderful okay you're going to put wild lettuce tincture Nine, twenty, twenty-two. Well, you don't even really have to put the twenty. Just put the nine and the twenty-two. That's because you know that it was done. Now, shelf life on this indefinite because it's alcohol. As long as you store it correctly, it will last. It should not go rancid at all. Um, Keep it in a nice, cool, dark place. Uh, I have a linen cabinet inside where I store a lot of my tinctures because it's dark and it's cool. Man, my hand is hurting from weeding today. 9.22 and that way it gives you a basis uh, that it's done and when it was made other than that indefinite shelf life simple easy anybody can do this as long as you have the alcohol the containers and above all else the wild lettuce y'all I hope this video encourages you also to make your own medicine cabinet and get away from you know who because they don't want you well. They care less about you being well. They do care about you being addicted to a lot of things and coming back for more. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. May you each be blessed. Stay safe. Stay sound. Above all else, stay positive. We got this together. Keep stocking your pantries with all the nutritious food that you possibly can when you can. I look forward to seeing you in my next video, and may you each be blessed. I'll see you soon.